shot on my face. So we got greenhouse too. This is uh, the East West uh, Diamante. It's the kind of common one that's grown here. Uh, fertigation's a little under it, so we're gonna hit it again today. It's gonna be twice in this week. So this is where having a tool, an uh, EC meter, allows you to measure the salt content inside your uh, soil. So one of the best ways to do it is when your soil is nice and wet, when you do your irrigation like that, that's a good sign of wetness. We got a 30, at least 30 centimeter here. The higher your hills, I've seen a lot of practices where if you uh, bring your hills up higher and higher, it actually helps the plant protect, especially with tomatoes because they constantly root and they'll, they'll kick off roots there. I don't know if you see them, but the higher you put it up, they actually will um, root into it. So we have nice high hills. That normally prevents a lot of the disease issues so the water can drain through. So you don't have the problem when you're running a full drip system like that. You don't have the issue of too much water because the soil is nice and deep. So you'll get it. But what we do have is we have a lack of nutrient inside. So we're going to hit it again this week. So just these things, they are massive feeders. So they want as much uh, as you can give them. I don't see a lot of other issues. I see mite. This is what mite looks like on tomato. So this is mite. Mainly you look at it and it's the crispy curling, but I think we already treated for mite this week. We'll probably hit it again. I don't see a lot of the wilting that I saw last time. So no much, no, no more wilting. So it looks like everything made a good recovery once it got a little bit of feed and everything. And again, we try to incorporate, you can see some of us, this is uh, Dufos, which is like uh, bat or uh, shellfish or anything like that. It's just like a double phosphate and whatnot. So we, we incorporate that and then we have chicken dung mixed inside there. That's kind of the little flakes of everything. So we, we mix a lot of organic matter inside on top of normal uh, uh, chemical type fertigation. A lot of your stuff is going to be like that. We have good start of flowering. So we're, I'm kind of that point where I'm gonna play catch up because I have one that's already flowering there and then I have babies that aren't there. So we have a weird EC measure where you see baby plant, flowering plant. You don't, you don't want that <laughs> in, your, in your crop cycle. You also don't want some of the pests. I can see some of the nutrient parts right in there. You can see some of the nutrient, but I don't think I can really worry about hitting it too hard. I think these guys will just need more. They'll bounce back. This is leaf miner right there. So leaf miner, that could be over fertigation when it gets really crispy brown in yellows like that that could be a sign of over fertigation but we're we're trying to keep them about the same but again these guys were grown irregularly in the greenhouse these were actually our leftovers we didn't plan to actually put greenhouse two back into production so soon but it, it would be it would be a waste of seed if we didn't at least try we were able to fill most of the rows like i said our target per greenhouse is about a thousand plants 960 to be exact there but we we had these extras might as well use it so the guys are in the process of retrellising what i'm doing is i'm just checking i'm listening so i if you can hear i'm listening to hear if there's like leaks and checking because that'll mess with your fertigation numbers like one side will get uh too much so here i'm gonna have them treat for leaf miners that's a second sign that i've seen it here is probably nutrient so I'm gonna boost up nutrient. It could be mite. Again, it looks so familiar at the, at the beginning of a season that it's one of those things that's really tough to do unless you have like a couple years under your belt and you're like, oh, okay, that's what it, it could be this or this. I know it sounds like, you know, you try not to create, you get A or B. <laughs> it's a little more complicated than that sometimes. At least I try not to make it, but at the easiest level, it's much easier just to come out here, use the tools and methods and just check and then just use your eyeballs and look and then be like, all right, this is this. So when we first started, didn't know a lot of the things that we encountered in Pasugong. So one of the issues that we have is, you know, finding out like, what's that? Is that like disease? Is that in the soil? You know, is that a seed selection issue? Who knows what it could be? Because you'll see that it'll have like nice green on top and then it'll just wilt. That could be bacterial wilt. There is uh, nothing you can do about bacterial wilt except for plant in other places. There's nothing about it. They, they try to make them as disease resistant as possible these days, but <laughs> yeah, not so much. Yeah. Some places, some seeds just won't work. So what we did is everything looks pretty good. We're starting to see the signs of flowering. I see a little bit of mite. I see a little bit of leaf miner. I need to hit it again with more nutrients. So that's, that's easy day. We can, we can hit that. I don't notice any other things like that. I already did my check on greenhouse one, so I can kind of 
pause the video here, readjust, and then I'll hit up greenhouse water and we'll go check out mini greenhouse because those tomato plants are already uh, a little bit uh, far along. I think they're like two weeks now. I think after this week, it'll be about just over a month in the ground. And one of the things is I'm, I'm prepping for a big project here. Uh, I'm just kind of taking a look at my irrigation and kind of replacing a lot of the, the valves and everything else like that. The kids are busy roaming around and, you know, just being kids. You know, get them out here, just get them out in the fresh air and get them to roam around. We had a, a road blockage. Normally go like, a, we have another entrance. So we had a road blockage. So yeah, there's always something that comes up on the farm. I'm gonna put this little tool down so I can get my face in it. So this is now uh, three weeks, three weeks in mini green, uh, greenhouse one. This is the minions. Yeah, look at those minions. Hello, bugs. You broke your umbrella. You pricked yourself. You okay? Okay. So I'm going to reuse all of this. I'll, so I'll, I'll show the project. I'll unveil that a little bit later. So this is our hot pepper. And as you can see, they're much higher. They're nice and bright green. I'll walk down the rows. What I'm actually looking for is I'm looking for this. When I walk down the rows, this is mite. Your, your peppers, what we suffer at this farm is we have mite. We have nematode. And that's pretty much about it. Because we haven't done a lot of agriculture or heavy agriculture yet, we don't have a lot of disease problems, but because we practice a lot of good hygiene and good checks, normally we're just gonna have it mite, very easy to prevent, uh, install shade nets, keeps the temperature ambient and about 80 degrees inside here. And then the other one. So what I'm also looking for is this. This is another good sign. When they get really flaccid and wilty, these are other things. Normally your bag medium shouldn't do this. So this is one of the key signs. This is just due to heat. I'm just gonna show that and top that out and make it uh, fit. Um, let's see what else, what else am I looking for? Just mainly taking a look to see if there's any other just, uh, signs of pest problems, pressure. I already measured the EC content in the bag, like here, remember I said in my last week video, you get one, you get two, you get three, and then and then you touch it, and then it goes eight, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and it goes all the way out to it. So one of the big things that you wanna do is wash your hands, is where we have alcohol bottles. You see them all across our greenhouses. We have alcohol bottles everywhere. What's good is that at least these things have grown so tall, you can see the plant's already protecting itself by shooting off new growth. You just snip right there, and then it'll come back. You actually were five days late. I probably should have done it when I was out here earlier in the week. I should have had the guys just come back through and top them all. Uh, that keeps the V lower on the plant. See how it makes that nice V? I think I've explained this in other videos. I'll show some images when I edit this. This is like a good V. It's too high, and then you don't want them this high. You want them actually a little bit lower, and then it'll bush into here. It's okay because we got a lot of the system already set up. So it's not going to be too big of a deal breaker. We can always prune later in the season. And that's one of the, the big issues. Like when you see like one farmer does it this way and one farmer says you must top and the other one says, don't top your plants. Don't do this. It, it's your location. It doesn't matter. I, I've grown peppers without topping. Uh, one of our best productive ones that we did was in the field, planted one foot apart from each other, one foot apart from each other as tight as possible. One trellis line, just one little trellis line. And they grew great. They grew like 300 days. And we only cut them down because we were just changing out other crops because you can't mix big plants with small plants. So it really depends. So, I mean, there's lots of ways. I think a lot of the reasons people do top is they top just to keep everything uniform, the same size. Like again, it, it all depends on how your methods of handling the harvest and everything that's later on in the thing. But again, with pepper plants, whether it's the sweet pepper or the hot pepper, we, uh, you're gonna prune. We grew hedgerows of this our first grow and they grew all the way up to the ceiling which is like 10 12 feet above my head so uh, if you feed it it'll it'll grow and it'll continue to grow and it won't stop growing as long as you keep feeding it and it's a pepper plant and it'll last for years in that same spot it just depends on the size of the fruit will be smaller but you know it's still producing probably like 40 grams at the start of the season it'll produce 80 to 120 grams and that really all comes down to your nutrition program and your care of it and your washing hands <laughs> i can go on and on about it let me take a pause and then we'll walk over to greenhouse uh mini greenhouse sweet all right i break up these videos because it makes it easier for me to edit 
when I, when I get into that. I try not to have my editing thing. You could spend like 40 hours editing a video, make them like super cool. I try not to do that. I just try to like to make sure that I, I edit what needs to be said and then I edit out what doesn't and I try not to talk too much. That was already like 10 minutes of talking, which is plenty. And I try not to go past like 15 minutes most of the time. So most parts, I don't see any other issues. We got our nutri nutrient program good. This is the first sign I've noticed of maybe a nutrient burn, but for the most majority of the whole crop, no issues with nutrient. I don't see any reason to deviate. What I what I did check was that they were running a little hot this week. Um, I'm, I'm hitting them every uh, day. So what I did is this one will probably get a rest tomorrow instead of hitting it again. I'll let it rest with just regular water and then we'll uh, resume on Monday with the fertigation and then we'll just measure it. And as long as you're, as long as you're, uh, as long as you're checking and, and being diligent with it and then helping and then teaching and then everything. Because a lot of the methods that we do are kind of the standard for greenhouse production. They can also be applied to fuel production and just broken down in a lot of ways. And again, a lot of things, people just don't have the technology or the uh, knowledge sharing like a, farm extensions they do happen out here in the philippines they're just it's just the u.s gets very spoiled with a lot of its um uh, stuff so they're very easy there's always somebody will and here it's just hard to share knowledge because you know just to drive here and it's only like an hour and a half away it feels like it's like eight hours sometimes you know it's just it's just tough and this is one of the things that we're also testing as we walk into uh greenhouse uh mini greenhouse is that we decide to remove the row covers and just handle and manage the weed flush. I guess that's what they call it in the States is you flush out all the weeds and you prune up all the bottoms. And again, I have a guy who worked on a tomato farm. So he already kind of understands the, the name of the game is as these things grow, and even though these are determinant flowers or determinant plants, where as long as you don't mess with this part of the plant, you just say, don't touch the top like foot. You can cut everything up. Now we've have nice airflow and you see, the weeds don't have this this issue even though we're fertigating every day or sorry every week we're providing it gets that little bit but the rows are actually really nice and now that allows that soil to breathe and plastic mulch is the last thing you really want to but sometimes you culturally have to to do it to get into your plants because otherwise you do other things i do have some other things I, i've been reading this week uh, in terms of trying to get better uh soil moisture and everything but you can see the color of our soil is a nice uh, brown to beige. So it's been really good. So you don't, we don't have to have that. And we're already getting good temperature range between 60 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit for the most part. Um, no issues there, but now we have nice airflow on the bottom and we're not worried about rain splash because we got a roof and these guys have grown. This is a uh, one month of uh, growth and you can see outside like this regular, regular growth and just our, our part, we really keep a lot of that that um, other part and foliage here because it keeps the disease down. If there's more green growth and it doesn't look like a desert, the less likely you're gonna have diseases. And that's such a key piece of knowledge. That's where plastic, why people use plastic mulch is because they're having issues or they have to plant in the same part. But we found out that if we just have a roof above our heads, we don't need to spend money on plastic mulch. We can actually grow something I'll share in some other videos that would be way better and provide nitrogen fixing and um, organic matter all in the same part. So then you cycle on your tomatoes, you produce a billion dollars, you cycle it back out, you replant again the next year. And that's kind of what we're moving into uh, with this. But these are great. Uh, not, not too much issues with that. Maybe a little bit of line straightening, hunting for cobras out here. <laughs> But these guys look really good. These are about four feet high, I would say, like a toddler. And you can see like nice in between the rows. We're starting to get flowers. We have the bees, like I said in my last video. The only thing I worry about is just keeping these trellis lines taut. Again, I have no idea how much they can hold. I know mathematically what they can hold, but you know, sometimes it just, just doesn't work. So this is a really good uh, sign. So we're checking the trees as well because one of the issues we run into is trees and we really wanna make sure that we have a lot of stuff in here that's actually sucking up a lot of the other parts. But if you treat one thing, you gotta treat the others and it just becomes cost prohibitive when you have uh, a small orchard. But yeah, I don't see anything crazy that's standing out. I've been yakking a little bit much. I told you, it's crazy about some tomatoes, but 
there, when you take care of it, you, you don't have a lot of the health issues. And this is completely open. I mean, there's no net. It just has a roof above its head just to prevent a little bit of water. And that's just mainly for disease prevention, if anything. It doesn't have an issue with pests. When we start getting the fruiting on here, then I'll probably be a little more unhappier. Oh, well, oh, I spoke too soon. We already have to start treating for fruit because this guy wants to be a winner. He's already produced two rows of fruit and it'll be easy thing. So I'll teach that. So we had a little bit earlier fruiting than I expected. And like I said, you're trying to keep everything about the same. So you, it makes it easier on your team, your guys, yourself. So you don't have to start changing up formulas because some stuff you can't spray or treat when you're ready to harvest and vice versa. Or some bring in certain types of insects you don't want to bring in yet until you're ready to start producing. But these guys are already within a month. They already has, you know, uh, cherry size fruit. So we're already gonna start taking on that. And right now we're starting to see some good flowering. So I'm gonna hit it again with some flower and I'm gonna do some measurements on the soil and kind of see what this EC looks like. And again, it's directly in the soil. This thing works directly in the soil. It doesn't matter uh, whether it's bad, coca or whatever, it works really good. But I don't have any other issues with this. So let me take some measurements then I'll pick back up the camera. All right, so I already took a quick soil sample of the three rows. You can go like first, mid, and then end, you can do every plant. Uh, I mean, whatever time you want to do. But again, you know, let's go back. So let, let's cut some time and savings and whatnot. And let's, let's think about how our plants are. So if it's same soil type, same everything, unless there's like a noticeable, like the plant's smaller than the other ones. Might want to go check that one out. But it looks like everybody's growing about the same growth rate. So I'll have to hit greenhouse, mini greenhouse as well. The reason I call it mini greenhouse is because it's literally half the size of our normal greenhouse sizes. So we'll go hit up mini greenhouse and hit that. So greenhouse two, green, mini greenhouse, need fertigation. Greenhouse one can rest a couple of days and then resume back in. Again, I have a measurement numbers that I target each week based on the growth rate in plants and how fast I want to get this to market as well because I can control that. I can speed up some things. I can slow down some things well, within reason, but I, I get what the plant's giving me. So it just started to rain. I'm gonna go take a look at the nursery and see what I got, talk to Treen, see if we got any other issues with the farm, and then I'll delegate some tasks this week. So I'll pick it back up in another video. Bye.